Good evening, everyone. This is Travis with CoCab, Watch Collectors of California and Beyond, bringing you another review. Tonight, we're going to be looking at a fantastic looking watch. It is the HMS 001 by Timeless Watch Company. Let's go ahead and bring it up here closer. I'll let you look at it while I tell you a little bit about the brand. Uh, the brand was started in uh, 2020 by Mile Oberkampf. This is his first watch, although he has a lot of experience in design, which I think really shows uh, in this watch. Oh, and before I jump into it too far, I did want to mention uh, I'm not receiving any compensation for this. I will try to be as objective uh, as possible. And as you're watching this, if you could do me a favor and like, comment, and subscribe, that would be much appreciated. So uh, first of all, there are two versions of this watch. We currently have the HMS001 that has the white matte exterior on the dial there. The other version is 002, which has an anthracite uh, darker version uh, of the watch there. So this is limited to 250 pieces in each version. And, uh, you know, just kind of looking at it, and, and it's kind of described by the, the brand as Neo Vintage, which I think is accurate really does a great job of living up to its name of Timeless. Few specs, it is 12.8 millimeters tall. Diameter is 41.5 millimeters. 45.5 if you include the crown. Lug to lug is 47 millimeters. Lug width is 22 millimeters. And the exterior lug width is about 30 and a half, tapering down to 27. It is water resistant to 50 meters, made in Switzerland, and has a two-year warranty. So that's some of the, the basics. Now we're going to jump into looking at the, the watch itself. I think I did a little uh, fingerprint on the crystal, so I'm going to tidy that up. The crystal is a sapphire crystal with AR coating. Looking through that, we see what I think is probably one of the best features of the watch, and that is that beautiful guilloche dial produced by machine, absolutely gorgeous, seriously captures and, and kind of transforms the light into evolving geometric patterns. You can kind of see that as I move the watch around. It's just beautiful. Also, it has a complex dial construction with a little central aperture to reveal the hour wheel through the logo, which is very original. Uh, also, the timeless nameplate you'll see goes from the center of the dial out to the 9 o'clock position, which is something different and I think looks pretty cool. The hands are all centrally positioned. The minute and hour hand are blasted rose gold, decorative, and you'll see a cutout aperture. Try to get it in the light there so you can see it really nice with the decorations there on the, the hands itself. And the second's hand is polished steel black and it's basically a straight line. Moving down to the date window... You'll see the date windows at the six o'clock position. It's a distinctive round date window. And you actually have a round small date window inside of a bigger date window that, there you go. If you get the light just right, you can see where it says date, but you have to get the right light just right for it. Moving out to the chapter ring, you'll see that again, it's matte white. We also see very small five minute markers integrated right into the the minute track design on the exterior of the chapter ring. Very well executed. You can see that, like in this instance, the 10 right above the 2, the 15 above the 3, and so on. <clears throat> the bezel is fine sandblasted stainless steel. It does have 12 dimples, one lining up with each number on the dial. The crown is in the 3 o'clock position, and another eye-catching part of this watch it is round with 20 grooves and good grip. It's about 7.7 .7 millimeters in diameter, four millimeters from the case. It's signed with the logo and has a rose gold center. The logo is unilateral, so as you wind it, it continues to look great. The whole revolution. It's made of three parts. The center is the rose gold. You've got the stainless steel and then a black, a black PVD coating and it does not screw down. The case material is steel. It has a finish of circular satin. You can kind of see that on the case itself. One of the things I love about this watch is the 
use of textures and materials. You can kind of see that, especially right here on the side of the case. You got the lug in a different texture, the rose gold polish around the lug, and then the bezel. And it just comes together and it just works really, really nice. So it's pretty cool. You'll also see that there's two thin polished rings between the case and the bezel and the case and the case back, which I think just also sets it off and, and looks great. Flipping around to the case back, you're going to see a, a basic design with the logo on the back. It is numbered, and it has um, the Timeless logo, the word Timeless, 50 meter water resistance, stainless steel, the identification number, automatic, and Swiss made on the back. It does provide screwed down access to the movement. It is slightly concave, as you can see there but it does not interfere with wear or comfort. Moving to the lugs, as you can see, they're not drilled. They are tubular and screwed in, which is kind of a nice upscale touch uh, for this watch. They're steel and attached to the case with the rose gold framing that really catches and kind of bends the light and, and looks great around them. The strap is calf leather, it is 22 millimeters at the lug, and it tapers down to about 20 millimeters at the ends there. It's about 118 by 75. It's colored to coordinate with the watch, with each model having a different color. Neither strap is signed on the back, just to show you there. There are nine punched holes, with the last hole pretty much unusable due to the strap struggling to stay inside the keeper. And in order to keep the second keeper in place, you have to pretty much get to the fourth hole uh, on the strap. The two keepers are fairly thick, about eight millimeters each. So you can see those there. Stitching quality is excellent. You will see it's white stitching, and I believe it is stained to match the watch strap, which looks great. The buckle is not signed. It is a clasp uh, of polished bar, basically. Pin wobble is very, very minimal a little to the left and almost none to the right. So very good there. I like that myself. The movement you can't see, but it is an automatic movement. You can kind of glimpse it there through the, the front of the dial. It is a Swiss made STP 1-11, which is basically the 2824 ETA clone. Has 26 joules, 44 hour power reserve. That's something you'll really appreciate if you put it away one night, don't wear it the next, it'll still be running by the, the morning after that, that next day. So that'll be awesome. 28,800 VPH. And it should be accurate to about 15 seconds per day. The packaging was very nice. Let me show you that. Came in this nice finished cardboard box. Inside of that was the leather pouch and the watch set right inside of there. And it looked great. Wearability, I would say this is very, very comfortable. I wore it for several days and enjoyed it uh, immensely. The other thing I liked about it is it sat on my wrist and only moved out of place by about a quarter inch or so, which is something that, that I really like. Some of the experiences, the strap was very comfortable. It came to me very, very supple. So that's really nice. It looks like high quality leather. The winding is very smooth. Just the right amount of tension, just what you'd expect. Setting the time is great. You pull it out two clicks. Works just fine to set the time. One thing I will point out is it does go about three grooves or one seventh of a rotation before it engages the, the hands. Setting the date is actually a, a joy with this. Get into the right spot. It actually snaps into place and there's kind of a satisfying click. I'll let you hear that. And you can see it's nicely centered and, and works out really well with that. Let's see, what could be improved? A few things on this. The bottom of the numbers on the chapter ring, if you look at the 2 and the 12 especially, but they sit a little close to the dark part of the dial for my taste. There's, there's no gap in between them. And the bottom of the numbers just kind of blends in. So if it, if it were me, I would put a little gap in between that. Uh, one other... Little thing is the date under the date wheel. I pointed that out. It's so dark you almost can't see it unless the light just hits it perfectly. 
The date window and the numbers are kind of small, so they do make it kind of hard to read if you're somebody that does use the date on your watch. The loom, there's no loom at all. So if that's important to you, just know that this watch does not have loom. If I have to nitpick it, a few other little things. The, the strap is a little short for my eight and a quarter inch wrist. Of course, if you've got shorter wrists, it might be perfect for you. The logo on the crown, also this is interesting, has five arms on it, where the logo on the back and in the, lo in the dial itself, as well as the logo on the website has six. So just an interesting tidbit. The other thing I would point out is the buckle just doesn't seem quite as nice or as high quality as the rest of the watch. If I had to do it over, I would probably say maybe integrate some of the design elements either from the hands or possibly even the logo itself onto the buckle. The lug design is a little difficult to change straps, at least without scratching it. So one of the things I would like to see is a quick connect or quick disconnect on the strap itself. Also, I would just point out a brace that would look magnificent on this. So what makes this unique and what do I love about it? First of all, that guilloche dial. It is just amazing. And as you wear this, especially when it hits the sunlight, you're going to be mesmerized. It is just absolutely beautiful. The logo badge on the 9 o'clock side, right over here, kind of like that. The nameplate going from the center to the 9 o'clock, I love that. The center of the dial, again, provides access to look into the movement. I thought that was really cool. And I want to show you guys something really cool. As you set the time, you can watch that logo in the center turn. It's actually connected to the hour hand. So that's a nice little touch that I thought really kind of set apart the watch and is, is pretty cool. Finish is superb. You can just feel the quality, both when you hold it as well as when you wear it. Great usage of texture and materials, as I mentioned before. You've got contrasts of polish and sandblasted and the rose gold, and it just really, really works with this. The crown is also one of my favorites. I love that, that center rose gold. It just sets it off uh, really nicely. And then the minute ring. I mentioned this, but I, I really like that minute ring. Those five-minute markers are integrated so well, it just looks like it's part of the design. So you get all of this for a value of 1,450 Swiss francs. That's currently about $1,446, which by the way, is way more affordable than it was a while back when it's at one point it was over $2,000 with the exchange rate. So this is a watch I love. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thank you for watching. Please put your comments <clears throat> below. And if there's something I did not cover that you'd like to see, let me know. And you do me a huge favor if you would like, comment, and subscribe. All right, thank you so much, and happy collecting to all of you.